Here's how you install the Peerless Assassin 120 SE ARGB dual tower air cooler on an AM4 motherboard. Open your box. You've got two 120 fans to pull them out. You've got your accessory box and you have all your accessories inside here. Then of course you have your dual tower cooling fins. You take everything out ready to be installed. Notice you have a protective sticker on here. Do not forget to remove that. We'll take out the accessories that we need. We will be using the AM4 slash AM5 mount. Meaning we only need this pack here because the rest is for Intel. Remove these accessories and use them. All this will go straight back in the box as we don't need it. If you ever decide to go to Intel, you already have mounts ready in which you can install this air cooler straight to. I like to get everything out ready just so that we can simply install right away. This is your standard AM4 bracket. This is normally already installed onto the motherboard. So this is all you will be using. You will not be using any of the standard bracket like this or these screws. Grab your motherboard and you place your mounting bracket back into your motherboard. Just like this. You need to install your mounting brackets. This. You got to install these stands first. So you just push them on and they will simply just sit on until you screw them in. Alright, just like that. This will install this way. Curved in towards the center. Grab your screw and screw it in. Do the same for all sides. Nice and snug. Before you go any further, just test to see that your screws here that secure the tower to the motherboard do line up with your thread. You just want to make sure it lines up and it does. So that's great. Give it a jiggle and make sure it doesn't move around. To install your cooler, all you have to do now is remove this warning sticker. Nice and gently. Have your thermal right logo whichever way you choose it does not matter which way it goes on but let's follow the way the ram writing goes we use our thermal paste that they're given us put on some thermal paste we'll just do the x pattern a lot of people are doing this now so let's try it and let's see how we go grab your tower line up your screw holes there we go nice and snug not too tight and that is our tower on now. Next, we need to install the fans. They have supplied a splitter cable here to help with the length because the PWM connector on this is very short. That's why they've given a splitter cable to help with the length. First, we undo these. There's two ways you can do this. Push and pull or straight push. Push is always the best. That's the way they've also asked to do it, but just say you have issues with the RAM. You could always install it, push and pull. It would still work fine. Let me show you the way they have recommended. You put one fan on this side. Now you see the problem with this here? It covers your RAM. And that just defeats the purpose of having RGB RAM. It's not a big deal. In the end, performance is probably what you want. So you probably want more cooling than anything else. I like to make sure that my cables are located closest to where they need to be routed. That way, you're not trying to route cables from this end. You want all your cables to come out at the top so it's easy to route. In that case, I put it in like this. Because we have RAM here, if you still want to use the push configuration, you can still do that. You just have to raise up your fan a little bit more. And that's fine. It will still cool. It's just a little bit higher and it just doesn't look as nice. And that's why sometimes I just use this configuration instead. According to the user manual, this is the way you should install it. Directing air directly out of the case to your rear exhaust fan. Now... We install the fans onto the fins. You have to clip this onto the fan into the holes furthest from where you're clipping it onto. So this is the how it's going to look. You want to just put these into the fan like so. Give you a better look. You just push these in. Sit it over where you want it. 
just pull it over until it clips over the fins. Let's take care of this side first and we'll do the other side next. Same deal, push it through your screw holes and clip it on. Turn it around now and we'll do the same to the other side. Push it into the screw hole, bottom one also, clip it over your fin. We'll do the same to this fan. Alright, now before we finish it off, we just want to ensure that the fans are equally mounted. So you notice here how one side is lower than the other. We just want to lift that up so that it is equally mounted. You just take off your clamp and then adjust it. Now you can center your fan if you want. Notice how I have RAM. This fan has to sit that much higher. Now with a big case, that will still work and that's fine. But because the RAM is there, I had to install it a little bit higher. So that's why I would mount it on this side. If you really care about your RAM and you want it to be shown, then you would move this on this side. Now you could always raise this up to be the same height as this fan as well. That's totally up to you, but I'm just going to leave it like that because it's not a big deal. But if you wanted to, you could always raise both fans so they're both sitting at the same level. That way it just looks a lot better as well. As for plugging in your cables, your PWM connectors that come off each fan will plug straight into your splitter, like so. You notice there are markings on your fan connector. The tab here has to slide in between the two markings, just like that. Then you have your ARGB connector, right? So you pull off and you connect it to the other one. So that allows for a daisy chain. Then it really is as simple as plugging in. On this motherboard, we have a J Rainbow header, which is five volt, three pins. And then we have CPU fan one, and then we've also got pump fan one. That's where your PWM connector plugs into your four pin, right? So you line up the tab on your PWM connector with your fan head connector, and you just plug it in just like that. And your five volt three pin ARGB will plug into this one right here. Depending where it is on your motherboard, you would route the cables to that spot. Line up your pins. Looking at it this way, there's two pins on the right and one pin on the left. Make sure you line that up properly and make sure you plug it in the right port. If there's four pins there, then that's not right because then there's nowhere for the fourth pin to go through. So it has to be a three pin RGB connector. Line that up and just push it straight on. From here, you just have to tidy up your cables and you do that by just using zip ties or twisty ties, etc. Whichever the case may be, whichever way you want to do it. It just makes for a much neater look. And then you would tuck this in the port of your case so that it would dangle behind the motherboard. And that's it. That's how you install the Thermalright Peerless Assassin ARGB Dual Tower Air Cooler. And this is what it looks like completely installed. So you would look at it from the front of the case. Now you don't really see the difference in the height here, but you do notice that it is covering your RAM. And honestly, in my personal opinion, I would move this fan to this side here, just so it looks better. But in the end, it's all personal preference. It wouldn't really make that much of a difference if you were to move your fan here. You still have sufficient air blowing through the case and cooling it. And you would also have help from the rear exhaust fan that would be just here as well. Overall, a very nice air cooler. And this stacks up to some 360 AIOs as well. The price to performance is really, really good in terms of how much you pay and how much performance you get out of it. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, see you in the next one.